Funnels and follow-up. Welcome, everybody. How's everybody doing today? We hope you're doing well. We hope you're building your business. And today we have a great guest, uh, somebody Barry and I have known for a number of years, Jerry Levinson of uh, Carpets of Arizona and also Profit Now. Uh, Jerry has taken the last couple of years, I guess it is, Bear. Where oh, yeah, he, we're, we'll ask him when he gets we'll here. We'll ask him, but he's been um, he has been coaching owners of flooring stores to be as amazingly successful as he is, and uh, and he's exploded that business. So I want to talk to him today and go ahead and bring him in from the green room, right. back. There he is, it's only Jerry. You know, we don't, welcome, we don't have to say welcome, anything welcome. nice about him. <laughs> no, Good I can say you, all, all nice things about myself. That's fine. So, so Jerry, give us a little bit of your background. I mean, you know, Barry and I know, but our listening audience, our viewing right. audience does not. Sure. Uh, I'm Jerry Levinson. I owned a company called Blind Devotion. It was a dating service where we matched blind people to ugly people. And uh, we did really well with that. Actually, those people needed window covering. So we got into the window covering business and that name worked out real well. Um, so, no, it was window coverings all along and built that business up my my goal was always to sell that business but mm -hmm. um i went through the same crash and problems people did in 2008 and 9 and i really felt exposed like that showed me all the things i was doing wrong i didn't want to blame the economy because the economy was something that was out of my control right i don't like to be out of control i want to be in control of, of what goes on in my life so i really realized that had I known more about marketing and business principles, I would have done a better job during that time. And I, I, I still would have suffered from it, um, you know, much of what we're going through right now, but, um, but I'm in a much better position now than I was in 2008 and nine, because I understand the business principles uh, of marketing, of selling systems, of uh, handling employees, building a culture, those things to, you know, not only survive, but thrive in, in trying times. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned what we're going through now. And of course we like to keep these evergreen, but you know, you listen to this in a year, five years, 10 years from now, everybody's going to know about the COVID-19 pandemic shutdown of 2020 and whether in the future we have something as bad, worse, or not so bad, business can still suffer. So and this is going to be known in the future as the great toilet paper rush. This is going to be <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and, of, and what's odd is I, I almost feel guilty about how well we're doing right now. I feel like I'm hoarding toilet paper, you know, like I'm hoarding all the customers <laughs> and the business, you know, and I feel bad. I know I've got a lot of friends and people I know that are hurting. There are people in other parts of the country um, in the same industry who have been ordered to shut down. We haven't been ordered to shut down yet. Um, but meanwhile, customers and people are still coming in and still ordering. And we're actually having a record month when a lot of people are are really hurting. And I, I feel kind of bad for that. You know, I'm grateful for the position we're in. But, right. You know, it, it is kind of surreal. You feel you feel bad for others. I, I equate that to people in the HOV lane that drive slow because they feel guilty that they're able to move a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, I think that is in fact what, what it's uh, all about. Um, so, so Jerry, let me ask you, what are the six profit activators? Um, what are six things that people can do right now in the middle, even in the middle of turmoil? that um you know that can help them grow their business i mean it, it's it's difficult to to change your life right now so it, it's kind of hard to say you know right now what you need to do is a little bit different from how you need to operate all the time so you're prepared for right now okay um so the six profit activators are more about what you need to do full time to run your business uh those are marketing um, so I'll go through them a little bit slower, but marketing is something that, um, uh, in the flooring business, uh, a lot of people do what's called PK sessions. They learn product knowledge. And it's funny that, uh, people spend a lot more time learning about the product 
than they do learning about the marketing, which is all about attracting customers. Right. So if you know more about attracting customers, you're going to do far better than somebody that's knowledgeable about the product. Um, at the end of the day, it's about your ability to attract customers to your store. Okay. okay. Then sales is the next thing. And, and the sales principle, um, one of the favorite sayings I had from Joe Pan and be understood. And really what I've learned, I kind of disagree with a lot of the expertise out there is like, why, why should you be the, show people why you're the expert. I think if you're focused on showing people why the expert, then you're failing to understand what's important to them and understanding what their needs are and talking their language. So sometimes we talk over people and tell them what we think should be important to them rather than trying to understand what is important to them. So Amen, brother. Yeah, really <laughs> broken down the whole sales process. And I'll give you a great example. It's something everybody can use. I don't care what business you're in. This works for every single business. Okay. When a customer comes in, most common question a customer will ask, somebody that first calls you is, how much does your product or service cost? And the response is usually a, a bunch of irrelevant answers. Well, it depends on your situation. Do you have this? Do you have that? You know, we custom tailor everything to everybody's needs. And it's like, no, take a step back and say, well, tell me about your project. What are you working on? So if I'm coaching a company too, and how, how much do you car, charge for coaching? Or why are you the expert? Oh, well, tell me about your business. Where are you guys at? How long have you been in business? I'm going to turn right around and, and try to understand them, their situation before I start coaching them on anything. And the one thing I've really learned is I don't have to tell anybody anything about me. I don't have to tell them why I'm the expert because I don't matter. Right. You know, all that matters is them, their product, their service that they need. Or um, if they're coaching, it's all about their business. You know, once I start talking to them about their business, they forget about me. It, uh, they don't care how long I've been doing it or what my certifications are, or any of that stuff. Yeah, nobody sure. cares about Jerry. Yeah, no. As long as you understand their needs, because it's always, it's always what's in it for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, always. So if they see that you understand their needs, you are the expert by default. Yeah, exactly. So the per third profit act activator is uh, about hiring a top employee. Oh, yeah. um, so the systems that you need to hire top employees, um, it's a little bit the same as uh, uh, marketing. You know, you, you have an avatar and there is a system in a way that you bring people in and hire them. And what are what is the most important for that position? Right. Like if you're hiring a salesperson, to me, the most important thing is follow through uh, and follow up. What is their ability like? In fact, I've got a whole system laid out where I give them the information. It's like, this is the pay. This is your expectations. If you're going to work for us, this is what we expect of you. And this is what the job is going to be like. Fair Why enough. don't you take this home and look it over and then let me know what you think. I don't say, give me a call tomorrow. I, I just let me know what you think. If you're too afraid to call me, then what are you going to do when I give you a customer? Are you going to follow up with that customer to see if they want to go with the order? You know, and I've hired two people based on that, that system. One were my best salespeople because they called me, one called me in the morning and I'm like, Hey, Miranda, uh, I liked you and another guy. I wish I could hire you both. I can't. I'll let you know by the end of the day. Well, at four o'clock, she called me again. I'm like, you got the job. Yeah. The other guy I never did call. So I don't care about expertise. I care about are you going to follow through? Because you can learn how to sell anything. Right. But are you going to be the type of person that stays with the customer and you're likable and you're going to follow through? So um, the next uh, profit activator, number four, is about building culture. It's about taking the people. People do not work for money. Um, I, I, I've never, you know, people talk about what do you pay? And if you pay somebody more, will they be more loyal? How many athletes have we seen get a big contract and then all of a sudden just fall apart? You know, uh, people do not work for money. They work for culture. They work for the love of the, co uh, the company. You need to share your goals, your dreams, your vision with your employees because your employees want to help you get there. So it's really important to share all that with your employees so they can be a part of the process of growing the company.
you know, and the other things we require of all our employees is to be in a BNI networking group. Um, the, the important thing about that is just from a cultural standpoint, make them a part of the process of growing the business. It's not about them getting business. It's about them going through the exercise of going out there and marketing the company, talking about the company, selling the company, selling themselves, learning that those skills will serve them everywhere. For the gas station and somebody stops them, you know, um, knowing those skills is so valuable. And uh, yeah. people will stay loyal to you, uh, again, not for the pay, if they're working for you because the amount you pay them, that's the worst kind of employee you want because somebody else can offer them more, more money. You're so vulnerable when it comes to pay. Okay. So um, the next profit activator for flooring, uh, this is mostly, it's about the displays and the presentation. I've taken every display I have in this store and changed it around. Um, I've written two books and one of the chapters is make it easy for people to buy. Make it easy for people to make a buying decision. So the way you present your product or service, if you give somebody too many options, you're going to confuse them and they're least likely to buy. Absolutely. Then if you give them one, uh, Dean Jackson told me this. I was having a great conversation with him. I, I went to his mastermind and I was saying, man, wouldn't it be great if um, somebody would deliver your luggage to your hotel and give you your keys? So you don't have to stand in line and get your keys. And he says, well, they actually do. It's a friction-free yeah. experience. He says, they'll actually pick up your luggage from your home and yeah. deliver it to your hotel. You know, it costs a lot of money, but it's a friction-free service that a lot of people will pay for. Absolutely. And yeah, so in our business, I talk about that to the other flooring dealers. How can we provide a friction-free service? You know, some people will charge for things that people need anyway, like furniture moves. Well, we'll charge for that as well, but it's all in, in the price and we don't talk about it. It's free furniture move. It's in the cost of everything. And right. I don't go up or down and based on a menu of items. I just make it really easy for people to buy from us. And they'll yeah. pay more money for you if you offer that friction free experience than like if you're going to buy a car. You don't want to pay for the tires and the windshield wipers and the radio and the, the steering wheel, right? You want Nobody all wants to pay $25 to put their flipping suitcase on the plane with them. You have got to take yeah. clothes on the plane with you anyway. And I, I want in the, in the comments, if you're watching this live or if you're watching a replay or something, I want you guys in the comments to say, do you love or do you hate the $25, that $25 that you're paying for your luggage? In fact, we dislike it so much that we have a, a specific credit card for the airline that we use the most. Oh, Catherine, you are uh, locked up. The airlines got to her uh, video feed. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what, she, what she was saying is the credit card that we have allows us to do one bag free per person for yeah. everybody on everybody on the ticket. So because the fee is ridic ridiculous, um, I I also equate we equate it to uh, and this is they do this in New York a lot uh, when we go back to visit restaurants. If you want to use a credit card, they upcharge you three to five percent. Yeah, and, and that just ticks me off. I don't go to restaurants that do that. I would rather they just up their prices on everything. Three to five percent, so it's all included. Yeah, and you don't you don't even know the difference. That small amount you're not going to notice, but you notice when they do that when they um, tag it on at the end, or there's a sign we're going to charge extra for credit cards. Right, so, it's a frustrating experience. Yeah, yeah, for people. In fact, they'll pay more. It, you know, people believe that that the consumer is so savvy about the price, which is another misnomer. Um, that that they know. The six profit activator is about raising your prices. And it's funny how many uh, people will treat a consumer. I like to ask the flooring dealers. And again, this goes to any professional. Um, how long did it take you to learn your craft? You know, and a lot of them, it's taken months or years to learn what they know. But yet a consumer walks in and they give that consumer credit for knowing what they charge, what it costs them what their competitor is charging, 
what all you get for that. I mean, and they almost take a defensive standpoint about justifying their prices and give their consumer way too much credit for knowing what they know. And in our cases, it's that they don't, how often do they buy flooring? It's just not often enough that they're familiar with the cost. Exactly, exactly. And here we got Catherine back. So oh, let's, let let's squeeze in. I, I have no idea how technology works. We live in the same house using the same internet, only mine got screwed up. So yeah. here we go. Um, the, the point I was making before, and I heard Barry saying it a little bit, but I'd like to hear comments uh, to everybody out there who, um, you know, do you love that $25? Do you hate that $25? And if you hate it, or if you love it, but if you hate it, then look in your own business and see where you're doing the same thing. Just like Jerry said, see where you are, um, you know, charging for furniture moving and then charging for this and then charging for that. And it could be all rolled in. Right. And, and Liddy, yep, we we agree. Use an airline that, that always has a bag free or use the credit card. That's the only way to do it because then you... You know, you think you're getting a cheap airfare, airfare, but all of a sudden now you got a hundred dollars in bag fees. Oh, it's a frustrating experience for sure, yeah. and, and that's the thing is, um, people would rather, you know, people aren't that savvy about all the all the little costs until you point it out to them too. And a lot of uh, companies make this mistake; they want to be transparent or honest, and which that's not what the consumer wants. You know, just what does it cost? Just tell me what it's going to cost to get this project done. You right. know, I don't need all the little details in, in this full on explanation of how you're going to do every little thing. So if, if they ask, you tell them, you know, but there's no reason to to be forward with it if it's already included. That's right. Right. And my salespeople don't really know what it costs to tear out carpet or what it costs to add Dumbo spray, which is my invention, um, or what it what it costs to uh, move the furniture. You know, we don't know what it costs. Why? Because it's all it's all in the price. I have no idea what it costs. So right. if you move your own furniture, I, you're not saving anything. It's free. It's part of uh, our whole package. So um, we don't really break it down by that. That's another big thing is, is when it comes to raising your prices. And uh, I think raising your prices, you know, they say people's biggest fear is public speaking. I think people have a much bigger fear of raising their prices than they do public speaking. And right. yeah, it's, and it's funny because if you talk, if you ever notice when you talk to somebody about raising their prices, their heart will start beating faster. They start getting nervous <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, everybody's going to know and I'm going to lose all this business. And I just feel bad. Like I'm ripping people off which is one of my biggest pet peeves too. this idea that I don't want to rip people off. Um, and I've said this to people many times. If you don't want to rip people off, then provide the product and service you agree to pri uh, provide for the price that they agree to pay. Right. Exactly. The only people that rip people off are people that generally they don't charge enough, but they don't come through on the product or service that they said they would do for the price they agreed to do it for. Yeah. Pr pr the ones that are ripping people off, not the ones charging too much. You can't yeah. charge too much. Yeah, you know, and unless you've taken a vow of poverty, yeah. you, know, you, you need <laughs> yeah. money to survive. Absolutely. And and always provide more value than they're paying you for. Yeah, Wallace, Wallace Waddle said that. Uh, always, you know, pr provide more uh, in 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 the service, in the product, in whatever than you were compensated for. Go right. the extra mile. There, there's a reason for that. Yeah, absolutely. I love working with uh, all business owners and, and showing them that I can, I have many business owners shown them how to raise their prices and really package together their offerings. We are working with a locksmith in here. Um, I like to do little masterminds inside my showroom and uh, I'll, I'll invite some businesses in, but we had this locksmith couple come in and um, they were charging like, um, $149 to do up to six locks. By the time we were done with them, it was like, you know, $749. It includes the zoom alarm bell, recoding the garage door. We gave it a, a cool name. And that's something I always do too. I, I teach people, you got to name your product or service. It's got to be um, sexy. 
Yeah. Get, give, we have the home seller dream program. We will put carpet in your home. If you're selling your house for a hundred dollars down and we don't get paid until the house um, is sold. It's easy to understand. It's easy to repeat. And um, we did it to benefit real estate agents. We don't talk about carpet. We don't talk about polyester versus nylon. We talk about your ability to sell the house faster for more money. That's what their buying criteria, you know, the real estate agent. And that's who we're trying to help is a real estate agent we're trying to help her help yeah. her customer with that. The, the uh, it needs a name. Yeah. The homeowner who's moving doesn't care. The real estate agent only cares that it helps to sell the house. Mm -hmm. So why are you asking the, you know, why are you going down the path of, you know, what do you think the future family that's going to be living in this house wants? Yeah. Well, and I'll talk care. about something that's really big in your guys' world. I know you guys are, are this is one of your main topics is uh, about choosing an avatar. Absolutely. And so one of the biggest mistakes people make is uh, believing that uh, choosing an avatar is to the exclusion of everyone else. I'm going to leave out everybody. And so in the Home Seller Dream Program, our avatar is the real estate agents. Mm -hmm. We can go after them with very clear marketing. It's a good target audience and we can hit them with everything we got um, based on that program. The marketing is very simple. The message is very simple. And when we started our business, we wanted to go after real estate agents, but I didn't want something where we were asking for their business because everybody's asking for their business. Um, and another thing I teach people is about understanding who your competition is. When I'm going after a real estate agent, I'm competing against warranty companies. I'm competing against blind companies, alarm companies. Everybody else is trying to get their attention. So I wanted to create a program that benefited them where I'm not asking for their referral. I want to give you something that's going to help you sell the house faster for more money. So I'm not marketing Carpets of Arizona. I'm marketing the Home Seller Dream Program to help you help your client out. You know, And once we do that for them, they're ours for life. And I didn't have to offer them something at a cheaper price. I gave them a solution that worked for them to help them sell the house. Absolutely. And Jerry, let me ask you a question. Um, Cause I don't, you know, I don't know exactly how the home sellers uh, program works in, in this respect. Is it only real estate agents that can take advantage of it? Or if a homeowner is selling for sale by owner, can they take advantage of it? And there's so, a point. And we purposely advertise no for sale by owners. And the, I, one of the reasons we do that, really the main reason we do that, it's an emotional reason. Uh, real estate agents hate for sale by owners. Okay. So we want to say, hey, we're excluding these people. And it's, and one of the things that in order to sign up for the Home Seller Dream Program, the house has to be listed by a professional real estate agent. So, so that's one of our conditions in order to sign up for this program. Have for sale by owner people ever approached you anyway saying, hey, can you, uh, you know, can you do this? We've done one, you know, and it's, it's not as good because you, there is complications with it. Um, you know, it doesn't, this transaction's not as smooth. Right. So, and the reason, well, the reason why I'm asking is because you target real estate agents and this, and this goes back to the avatar. You target the real estate agent, you go after the real estate agent, but Hey, there are other people. There's the homeowner that hears about it. Maybe the homeowner yeah. is telling their real estate agent, I heard about this thing. Have you looked into it? Maybe we should do this in this house. You're targeting your avatar. Yeah. And the people who need to hear the message. So let's that talk a little bit about who's the best person to market to. I, I always love this discussion. The best person to market to is not the person that needs your service the most. It's the person that's most likely to respond to your service. Yep. So it's much easier to advertise to real estate agents because there are certain tools and mechanisms you can use to reach them. Um, much easier than somebody who's selling a house. That list is maybe a little bit harder to do. You got to do a lot more blanket marketing. It's not as targeted and you got to hope that your message reaches that person. It's a right. lot harder, but uh, I liken it to a gym owner. Uh, if you are going to uh, advertise to somebody to help them get in shape and look better, feel better and be healthier, you're much better advertising to people who are in shape 
than somebody that's fat who doesn't work out and who's not interested in working out. They're less likely to buy. What's that? Yeah, I, don't, I don't see the advertising. Jim, scroll right past it. Flip, click the channel. I don't care about that. Yeah, I, I don't even like people named Jim. I mean, <laughs> I... I, I <laughs> It's actually my best friend's gym, so that's <laughs> been my standing joke. I, I go to the I do, but just for the hot tub. <laughs> that works. I that heard works. that on the second floor they got a place where you can work out, but yeah. the weights are very heavy. So, yeah. and you got to go. Upstairs. I have nothing to prove. You get tired going up the stairs. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> I know. That's, that's it. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. So they put an escalator I, in. I'm not using that. <laughs> um, G-O-Y-K. Tell us about that. Tell us about your latest adventure with that. Tell us what's going on there. Goik. Goik is Goik. Uh, something I started. It's uh, uh, it's not when uh, old uh, Jewish women uh, get injured during sex. It's it's not a hip injury. That's what it sounds like, but that's not what it is. So, uh, GOIC is stands for Get Off Your Knees, and that's for installers. I actually got inspired to do that from Joe Polish, who has GOTT, G-O-T-T, which stands for Get Off the Truck. He developed that for people that do um, carpet cleaning to get them from you know, working in their business to working on their business. Right. There's a lot of people in the flooring industry that I've talked to that I've had one-on-one -on -one masterminds with that um, they're really good installers. They're talented people. And, but they're having a hard time trusting other people to do the work that they're really good at, but they're getting older. It's harder for them to do that work. Yeah. And you cannot grow a business while you're installing flooring. You know, True. you it's not the best use of your time. So these guys are in a very difficult position. I understand that I was there myself when it came to the blind business. I used to install my own blinds. And when I hired somebody, it, um, it, it was, I kept having to go back and fix their stuff. And so the first thing I want installers to understand is the person you hire is not as good as you. They're never going to be. And you're going to end up having to fix stuff yourself. That experience for a customer is fantastic. People think everything goes smooth, that that's a great experience for a customer. Nope. In actuality, when things go wrong and you come out and take care of it, that's the best experience you can have for a customer. Absolutely. You will get more referrals from that customer than the ones that never had a problem. You know, they will remember that that was a pain, but you came out there, got on your knees, and fixed that plank that was bad or restretched that carpet or did something to fix the problem. And uh, customers will actually refer you more and more likely to use you again than the ones that never had a problem and everything went perfectly smooth. And do you find that that same goik theory right, Goik. Goik. Um, that same that same get off your knees, um, you know, get out of the truck. Uh, does that go across many different categories of business for the entrepreneur? Sure, but it's a target audience. I mean, it, it depends on what field I was in. There's probably something similar for HVAC, uh, for plumbers. You know, typically most businesses are started because somebody's good at doing the work. They're not good at selling the business, the concept. Uh, how many bookkeepers have you talked to that don't know how to grow their business? Because they think people are hiring them because they trust them to do all the bookkeeping. And I've talked to bookkeepers who I've taught them how to grow their business and sure. saying, no, you do not have to physically work on the books. People yeah. are trusting you in your company. And if they have a problem, they know you're going to take care of it. But there, it, it goes beyond you physically having to do the work. Right. And that that's, goes back to the, the old cliche to work on your business, not in your business. Yeah. You know, be, because you have to be able to expand and grow. And if, if, you're, if you're so buried in that, the doing, 
You know, the actual physical work of the business, you don't have time to do the rest rest of it. There's the only thing I actually teach today. people too. If if you are really good at it, then what you need to offer is the owner's promise guarantee. Look, I guarantee this is going to go well. You're going to love your new floors. And if you don't, I will personally come out to your house and take care of whatever needs to be done. Now, I don't offer that because I won't come out to their house and take care of it. <laughs> but, but you started that way. You no, know. I, I, no. I got into this business with no flooring experience. So well, I'm talking about the blinds. The blinds I learned as I went along. Um, I, I never really offered that because even at that time, I didn't know enough to have the presentation like I do now. I mean, our presentation just kicks ass. And uh, I can I can build somebody a presentation in an afternoon just going by the steps. And we'll talk about that for a minute. It, it's um, I can't even remember what I named that process. Um, but it, it talks about kick -ass how, presentation. What's that? If you named it the kick-ass presentation. Something like that. It's the ultimate presentation experience. So um, it's the ultimate sales experience. So I was going to share that with you. I didn't find the file. The But what it is, is how do you take whatever you do that's ordinary and make it extraordinary? And I'll give you an example. So we're going to come out to your house and give you a guaranteed accurate quote. Okay. Other people are going to offer a free in-home estimate. That sounds a little bit sexier, right? A guaranteed accurate quote. We are going to, um, we do have a love your carpet guarantee. So if you don't love it, we'll actually replace it. Um, we talk about that. That one's a really interesting one because some people get more well, like, whoa, I'd never do that to you. So I've had to teach salespeople how to work with customers that have that reaction because you actually make a customer feel bad at that moment. But some of them dig in and like, wow, that's really good. So um, then uh, we do offer free furniture move. And uh, the Dumbo spray I was telling you about, but we tell them that we're going to tear out your carpet. We're going to uh, haul it off. We're going to sweep the floors and inspect the tax strips to make sure everything's in good shape. That's something everybody does. But the way I just explained it, and it's in, in our flyer, it's in our presentation, it gives you doubt if the other company is home. Is Home Depot going to uh, dispose of your carpet? Oh, I don't know. They didn't, nobody told me they were going to do that. Right. So we're telling people stuff that other people do too, but, and we're not telling them that they, they won't do it. That's just left there for them to, you know, oh yeah. Wonder. So, so we talked earlier about where you don't talk about full disclosure. Well, I charged you a dollar 35 because it cost me a dollar 25 to do this. Yeah. Don't need full disclosure there, but you certainly need full disclosure in the, we tear up your carpet, we haul it out even if it's what everybody else does, because it's pointing out to the person, there's no doubt in their mind that everything is going to be done correctly. There is no doubt. You just told me that yeah. you're go, you're giving me a guaranteed accurate quote is what you called it. Yeah. Okay. There is no doubt in my mind now that that stupid little thing I have in, you know, in this room where the floor goes up a little bit or that room, there's no doubt in my mind that you took that into account and I'm not going to get an upcharge later. It, and you just said a lot of really important things, Catherine. Um, and, and what leads to, you were talking about it as the consumer yeah, and what the consumer experiences. Everything we talk about is from the standpoint of the consumer. And this is a little tip for the coaches out there and the consultants. Uh, a lot of people will tell you what they do and why they're the expert. What I have them do is tell me about your customer's experience. I want to know what, what is a customer going to experience from using you? This is how we come up with this whole system and this whole plan. Yeah, It's all about showing a customer, consumer, a client, what their experience is going to be like. And then what's the benefits and what's the feelings they're going to have after they've done work with you? You know, what were the benefits? It's not why you're the foremost expert on diet and nutrition. It's about how I feel from using Catherine's health uh, program, 90 day health program. You know, it's like I give you a time frame and a system 
and I tell you how you're going to feel afterwards. And maybe I give you an example of somebody else who had the same experience, you know, and not telling you about like what's in the nutrition or what's in the bar or what's, what's in the diet. Uh, you know, what, what, what exercises do you have to do? You know, I'm going to sell the sizzle, right? Yeah. Always. Now, now you alluded to it before when you spoke about the locksmiths. So you do your consulting. Profit now is the consulting, or is that your is that your mastermind? So let's let's get that question out of the way because pro- we're talking profit now in Carpets for Arizona. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, you want to know something kind of funny? I've had a very difficult time branding profit now. It didn't roll off the tongue. It hasn't worked. Um, there are other people. Uh, the goik has been really easy. I can make up a sticker, a label. I can I can brand that. We actually started branding Jerry's Masterclass. And again, our target audience is, I don't really work with other clients. I do work with a lot of people just as friends. I don't charge them anything. Anybody can reach out to me for a one-on-one mastermind just because I, I really enjoy doing it. Um, but uh, um, in my niche, it's really the flooring where I look to make money anyway uh from the consulting sure. standpoint is from the flooring community and that's by adding tremendous value to them they have to make money off of the advice i give and it's really unique um working with them because uh, was, we had somebody the other day say in the facebook group um and give you guys a little tip from a consulting standpoint. What's made me really successful as a consultant is the celebrity I've gained from starting the Facebook group and running it. It, it hasn't been as much my knowledge or advice, although I'd like to think it was, as it is just, you know, if you're the person that started the group, you're more than likely the people that everybody thinks is, you know, on Mount Olympus there. And yeah. uh, they're, they're the uh, source that everybody wants access to everybody thinks a lot more highly of you than than you do of yourself you know they have no idea what's in your bank account right so start (laughs) a good group grow it grow it to 4500 people have great interaction in the group that's that's key you know with your group you've got to pop in there and have some good interaction and then yeah you are you are the genius yeah i find it's really good to as much as I can lift people up because there's a lot of people and I, I, the only time I, I chastise them is for not charging what they're worth. And it's like, you guys don't appreciate how skilled you are. You're right. competing against somebody that doesn't have the skill and the reliability. You know, the question is, is, is if somebody is the customer better off using you than somebody else at any price. And there's nobody else say, no, yeah, they'd be better off using Joe down the street. Right. No, I'm the best at it. Well, then you've got an obligation to close the sale and you've got an obligation to raise your prices. So this person has the opportunity to use you. Absolutely. We we tell uh, we tell clients, you have an obligation to do a call to action. When yeah. you've presented information, when you've answered the questions, when you've asked the questions, gotten the information and you know in your head and in your heart, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what their pain point is, is what I can help them with. And you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt and you go, okay, well, here's some information by, it's a horrible disservice. It, it's it's really hurting the consumer. And that consumer can be, you know, another business, a business owner, if you're business to business or, you know, the end use, what, what we consider the traditional consumer. Rather than saying, here's what I can do for you. Here's how we're going to work together. And and let's get started. That is what they're looking for. That that okay to start working with you, however that is, or buy from you, or whatever that looks like. As you said, it's a disservice. I really think that um, the expert category almost needs to be done away with. It, it really is a celebrity thing. And uh, one of the reasons is, um, you know, even let's just take it from a retail flooring standpoint. You know, one of the things that's made me so successful in the flooring business is not knowing anything about flooring. 
well, everybody else is so eager to tell people about the product. I, I just want to learn about them. And when I build my website and when I look at it and put, I didn't build the website, but I have a company build it and everything I look at, it's from a, a consumer standpoint. It's like, okay, you got to take yourself back into your consumers. First of all, your web, everybody's got a website, right? Yeah. How easy is it to navigate? Does it make sense on a dumbed down level? And this is something very important that I, I should as, as this community that we've got to help teach people. There's a big difference between marketing and selling. And some people are, are trying to sell too fast. And they're, they're using good selling stuff as their marketing message. And it, it's kind of the, the analogy of when you go out on a new date, you don't expect to have sex with her the first night, right? You, you've got to court this person and, and you've got to build up to asking for their hand in marriage. You've got, you got to take your time a little bit. Marketing uh, is that introduction. And the biggest goal of anybody's marketing is to get somebody to raise their hand and say, hey, can you tell me more? You know, so like people are reluctant to put their pricing on there. Well, you don't have to put your exact pricing, but giving people an idea of what it costs is enough to make them make a phone call to get more information. That's what you want. You don't want to give them all the answers. You want to give them enough information to get them to make the phone call. But if right. you give them no information, because you want them to call you for that information, that's not going to work either. No. Yeah. You know, so we have one company that had on their site, they have 60 days uh, satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like the flooring, they'll replace it. You got 60 days. That was on their website on the front page. That is a selling feature, not yeah. a marketing feature. Yeah. Somebody looking for flooring, it, that's not even a thought. That's so left field that it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, marketing, um, it get, builds the interest, it gets them in the door. Yeah, Selling closes the deal. I mean, yeah. to, to me, that's the difference between, between the two. You've got to generate that interest. You've got to get them work, walking through the door or picking up the phone. There's got to be something, the call to action has to be something more than give me your credit card. Right. Yeah. And another, another big tip, uh, a lot of the people you work with and, and talk to are small business owners, right? Absolutely. Um, maybe under or over five foot six, I won't judge. Um, so uh, people buy from people. And I encourage everybody to, if they're not going to have their own photo, a cartoon image of themselves works really good. Yep. You know, and people like that, you and your dog, you and your spouse. People like that charm uh, and they love to support family businesses. They love to support you and they love buying from you. Do not take your image off your site and do not make it so corporate and so professional. I believe I, I've been threatening to write this book for years. It's personality, marketing and selling. I think you can sell more based on personality than you can on being professional. You've got three months to write it. <laughs> And I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah. Be a good book. <laughs> no, I, I mean, our, our business card has our picture on it. Our website has our picture all over it. Almost everything we do has our picture because you are working with us, Barry and Catherine. Yeah. You know, you're not work, working with some corporate entity. And I can't understand why some, I don't even want to call them small business owners, micro business owners, solopreneurs want themselves to look like a big corporate enterprise. Right. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't make any sense. No value you, in that. Yeah, yeah, the value is you. Right. So yeah. exploit it. We've gotten more business from small family owned business, no one over five foot six, uh, which has nothing to do with anything. You know, it, it, it's so funny, but it's memorable. People remember that we're short. They don't remember the line. It, it's it's been fascinating to me and this was my, you know how Blaine has your word of the year. My right. word of the year last year was curiosity. And it's just to have that curiosity of what do customers think? You know, I'm really curious of, of when I have signs in the store, do they look at the signs? Do they respond to the signs? I don't go by what my opinion is. I want to see what people think. 
you know, I'll give you a great example of that. In all the flooring companies, they have a um, catalog of products. The catalogs show lousy pictures, especially carpeting. You cannot get a good idea of what carpeting is going to look like. That catalog is useless. That's my opinion. But when I look at the data, people go to the flooring catalog. That's one of the highest trafficked um, uh, pages on everybody's website. So who cares about what your opinion is? Now, though, I've got the knowledge that people are going to the carpet catalog. I've got a place where I know they're going. I want to talk. So I've got a little heading up there saying that, hey, warning, you may not see the carpet you're looking for. We may have it here under a different name. You know, so if you don't see what you're looking for, give us a call and we'll let you know if we have it and what it costs. You know, yeah, so I wonder what your opinion. Everyone that is watching and listening to this, um, please notice that everything that Jerry is saying goes across many businesses. It's not just the carpet, carpet industry. It, it works for our business. It works for your business. It works for everybody that's watching this. It works for your business because these are techniques, common sense, common sense tools common, and techniques. Sense. Every business is the same fundamentally. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's what you got to remember. So I heard that from somewhere. Yes. Every business me. is the same. Have you guys uh, ever uh, seen or advertised in Google My Business? Yes. So one thing I know is everything now, and I do a ton of videos, 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 videos. Sure. So one thing I noticed, though, is photos outperform videos. Didn't know that. Posted a couple photos and wow, they work great. So not that you should only do one or the other, you should do both. But I was surprised to see the photos outperform the videos. Not only that, uh, one thing I noticed is people generally don't like watching videos. If you have the words up there of the video, they will read it rather than watch the video. And, and you know what? I, I do that too, because here's the thing. I don't want to disturb Catherine at her desk mm -hmm. by turning on the audio. Yeah. So if there's if there's no text on there, I go right past it. Right, and we even set up. Uh, I don't, you know, not to get into politics. I'm not doing that at all. But um, if you click on a political post or something, they have the words, what's being said. They have the video, and then they have uh, the rest of the explanation. So what I did in my uh, website is um, I've got an explanation of pricing for carpet, and I've got words video and then more words mm -hmm. so you can watch the video or you can read the explanation that's in the video and so it is like more basically people. the best of both worlds and it's done in the same way you know dan kennedy used to talk about this all the time like entertainment or not what was the big uh, sensational magazine um always had crazy uh, no, so World TV, Weekly, some, World Weekly News. No, what was National the other one? National Enquirer. National Enquirer. So he said, you know, look at that. When you're in the grocery store, look at that. They, the way that they write headlines to get your attention, to show you, you know, there are stuff out there that you can copy. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes everybody makes is they do what's done in their industry. They follow the trends in their industry. And their your industry is generally wrong. Okay, your industry doesn't know what the hell it's doing usually yep. when it comes to marketing. What you need to do is, you know, what is Chick-fil-A doing? What is Discount Tire doing? You know, how are some of these other businesses? You ever go into a business and see them do something and adapt their marketing because you thought that was such a great idea? You know, Chick-fil-A, one time they, um, I wish I could use this. It, it wouldn't work in my business, but um, they gave you a receipt in, in, in an orange color. And you can bring it back during this specific date and get everything that was on that receipt. You know, how many people held on to that receipt for a month and then went back in and got everything on that receipt plus more? Plus more. Plus yes. more. Yeah. That's like advertising, you know. So when you see ideas like this, if it applies to your business, there's no reason, you know, they call it swipe and deploy. There's no reason that you can't do that. And I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, so. and we, we call it rip off and duplicate. Duplicate, yeah. R and D, and and here's a tip for everybody out there who's listening: if you see something that you like, 
and you can't like Jerry specifically with carpets of Arizona, you're not going to say, Hey, keep this receipt. And in five years, we'll give you a whole new carpet or anything, but take it to your coach, take it to a consultant that you trust and say, this is a really great idea. How can I create something that's this impactful in my industry? You yeah. know, that's what brainstorming is all about. The first idea doesn't work for you, but that makes your mind. It's it's like, I, I, I look at it like, I don't know, brain food or whatever that, okay, that idea doesn't work, but oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so good. It's got this reaction. <gasps> Here's a great idea. So take it, take it to your coach, take yeah. it to your consultant. Yeah. Adapt it to your business. And then adapt it. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely. think that's a great idea. Uh, Jerry, you said earlier that you'll talk to anybody. You'll have a mastermind session with anybody. Uh, yeah. How can they do that? So um, you can go to uh, Profit Now with Jer Jerry at Jerry at Profit Now with Jerry. Actually, the easier one is just Jerry at Carpets of Arizona dot com. Oh, you gave <laughs> you go me to this Jerry link. at Carpets of Arizona. I was, I was setting you up for this link that you gave me. I know. I And that's how bad it's been with the whole profit now thing. Oh, there's the link. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got the link there. You can go there and, and schedule it on my calendar. <laughs> I just opened up my calendar too. So it's real easy. I, I, I do uh, two a day and um, it, it's great. I'll tell you what, I get a high off of it. It is so much fun. I love working with people and giving them those aha moments I love helping them raise their prices. That's the biggest thing is, is getting people to understand their value and charge what they're worth and getting it out of their own head and yeah. uh, you know really understanding how to position it. I think one of the good things to do is help people save money. Well, the only way you can help them save money is to charge them more. So <laughs> you, know, you always say, we have great discounts on all marked up items. You know. If you mark the stuff up enough, you can give people a discount. And that's a better experience than trying to charge them more to get what you're worth. It is. It go ahead. Yeah. And it and it certainly, again, it could work for certain industries. It might not work for other industries. It's a fabulous idea. How do you apply it to your industry? Take that great idea and you're like, I like the way that feels as a consumer. And that's important. As a consumer, I like the way that feels. I like getting walking in and saying I'm going to get a 30% discount. How do I do that for me? How do I do that in my business where it doesn't seem like it I'm whatever you're thinking in in your in your category in your business. Right. Work the idea. Right. Absolutely. Do the work. And that's that's a great way to end this. Do the work. If you don't do the work, your business is going to fail. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. So, Jerry, thank you so much for being on our show. Always well, a pleasure hanging out with you. Thank you, guys. It was a lot of fun. And Thanks let me give the, let me go ahead and give all of the closing stuff. Okay, so you can find Funnels and Follow Up on Facebook on the Funnels and Follow Up page on YouTube at Cohen Coaching Channel uh, on iTunes, Google Play Podcast, Spreaker, Spotify iHeartRadio, every podcast place, players. any place that you can listen to audio, you can find us at Funnels and Follow. Please listen. Please review, rate us, make us happy. Make Jerry happy. Make Jerry happy because that's uh, really if, all if that you matters. Are, that's fine. I don't mind if you if you embellish. You, yes. you, you can embellish. I'm not proud. Embellish away. That's a great last word. So embellish away. We'll see everybody on the next show. Thank you again, Jerry, for being here. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye now.